Okay, my name is um, Patrick Jansson, and thanks for inviting me to this uh, seminar. So I will talk about domain-specific languages for societal challenges, more specifically about multi-objective optimization and exploration of system simulations. And I will get back to an explanation of the diagram here a little later. A few words about my background educationally. I did a bachelor's in physics, a master's in mathematics, and a PhD in computer science. And I've been working on domain-specific languages, which I will describe later more in detail, uh, in many aspects of my life. And um, most of my publications are internal to computer science, but about a third or a quarter or so are in collaboration with people working on societal challenges, global systems, climate, and so on. My long-term goal is to create systems, which could be theories, programming languages, libraries, and tools, which make it easy to develop reusable software components together with proofs of their correctness. A software component in the context of this uh, conference is, could be agent-based model, and then hopefully described in a domain-specific language specifically targeted at agent-based models. So what is a domain-specific language then? Well, it's an abstraction of a particular application domain or problem domain, supporting domain specialists in building models. So an expression in this language can be seen as a formalized notion, a program or a specification. They can often be executed, but also analyze the structured data. They can be combined, mixed and matched, and the computer will help making sure that you can make good combinations and not nonsensical combinations. DSL examples include, from the mathematical sides, Euclid Euclidean geometry, a language about points, lines, circles, etc., or arithmetic expressions like the average of x and y. And there are also many tools, Excel for the language of uh, spreadsheet calculations, GAMS for optimization of the economic sciences, and an example here, Lexify, which is a domain-specific language for financial contracts, which was published about in 2000 and then spun, spun off as a company and later bought by Bloomberg. So my work on societal challenges started with my contacts with the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research from 2007 on. And they wanted correct implementations of models for simulating global systems, both for economy and climate. I knew a bit of mathematics, of programming, algebra programming. And we started a collaboration first with Cesar Ionesco, Nicola Botta, Carlo Jäger, and later also Sarah Wolf. And we worked on agent-based models early on. Uh, I found when searching my old files, an example from Carlo Jäger from 2009, Agenti Segreti, um, which was a well, first a, a Tesh file and then by Cesar and Nicola formalized in Agda and Haskell an implementation of this agent-based model. So um, I've been organizing workshops in the context of the Global Systems and Dynamics, policy, and Dynamics and Policy Project. And we published several papers on um, applications to economic modeling, uh, which I mention now because I will actually use the Pareto uh, Frontier later, which we used in there as well. And also comparing, testing, improving, um, applying domain-specific languages to mathematics, using sequential decision problems as a way of modeling uh, decision-making under uncertainty and to make it applicable to policy advice. And this was uh, in the context of several other EU projects. Currently, um, I'm working on a rather different project together with physics on optimizing fusion, so nuclear fusion with generative programming. And uh, I've still continued work on domain-specific languages of mathematics. Now there is a book published in January and our most recent paper in the societal challenges side is responsibility under uncertainty, which is currently under review. 
this uh, is also connected to the tip points in the Earth System project that I'm connected to. So now for a little more concrete technical part. So both in the uh, physics project I'm involved and also in this setting of agent-based modeling, I consider the object of study for simplicity here to be an expensive black box function E for experiment from some control space Y to some state space X. So in the simplest form, with uh, just one real numbers output, the aim is just to find an input output pair at a global minimum of E. This search can be done using Bayesian optimization with other optimization techniques. But if you look carefully and strictly at the specification, you notice that it's actually impossible to implement. I mean, the, the input space here, the control space is infinite. So for any finite number of it, point evaluations, there is always a risk of some other point being better. So fortunately, if we require some degree of smoothness of the function, and if we settle for a good point and not, the, not necessarily the optimal, so an approx approximation, the optimum, then it becomes implementable. So I mentioned this just to make sure that we, we uh, realize that specifications sometimes can be naively applied and give you unimplementable problems. Okay, so here is a diagram indicating the setting. So the experiment E is a function from the controls to the state. It could take minutes or hours to run it, a single run. Uh, I have an empty two-dimensional space on the left and an empty two-dimensional space on the right for, for the case of this being a two-dimensional multi-objective optimization or exploration problem. So it's empty because beforehand, we don't really know anything about E. So the aim is to find good controls for this system. But to start out with, before having run E, we don't really know anything. And we don't want to run E millions of times, but that, that would take far too long. So in practice, it's usually a few controls, but then also several other parameters that make sense. So the true experiment has a Cartesian product, a pair as input of a parameter and a control vector. And the parameter space here is indicated just for simplicity as just one dimension, but in practice, it can have several parameters. So this interval here could very well be lots of different parameters varying. So here for a single point, control point, we have varied the parameter space. And if we apply the experiment, then we will get a cloud of points here. So this shows the width and the height here shows the sensitivity or the stability or the uncertainty involved in this experiment. So we intend to control the this experiment by just look, choosing y. But as p can also vary, we actually don't have a fixed result, but we have some uncertainty. If these uh, intervals are small, that's fine. If they're big, then we're a little bit in, in trouble. But for the rest of the talk, I will ignore this uncertainty, at least in the diagrams. We should have it in the back of our minds. So we go back to the setting where we just look at the control set and the objectives. So here on the right, I've indicated with a green line that there is a certain part of the objective space which is called the safe operational space. This could be the greenhouse gas uh, emissions or, uh, well, the, the expected temperature in the world race is just two degrees and some other parameters, uh, economic costs or something like that. So both are intended to be minimized, but it's fine as long as they're below a certain limit and it's not considered okay if either of them is above. And theoretically, we could just apply this inverse of E to the whole set here, and we would get the safe control space. So those controls which are, and which when running through E will end up in this space. Now, if we look at an, an, an actual simulation of a system which we don't have to go into the details of, this is 200 runs and each line, each curve here, is fixing one of the parameters and varying the other one. 
So I've just shown here those which clearly intersect in a significant way with a safe operational space. But you can notice that if we want to, for example, minimize this parameter, then we end up at this corner. If you want to minimize the other parameter, we end up at this corner. So it's really, uh, we can get rather different uh, optimal points depending on what we actually want to optimize for. So it's a multi-objective optimization problem. And typically, if we take an off-the-shelf optimizing framework, it will insist on just having one measurement, which combines the objectives into one number. This is often ad hoc and could be problematic for ethical reasons or the fact that different stakeholders have different opinions. So our aim here is to visualize the objective space, to illustrate the trade-off between the objectives, to show the Pareto frontier, etc hopefully allowing the users, stakeholders, to choose which part of the control space is the best compromise. So if we, now knowing what it might look like, if we look at a certain set of possible inputs, AY here, we map it through the experiment, we get a set AX, much of which is outside of the safe operational space, but a certain part is inside. And this part inside is indicated by this red uh, blob again. And these are the safe controls, but not all safe controls are equal. Those safe controls, which are up here, could be improved on easily in both directions. But as long as when, when we end up at this edge, that's the call the Pareto frontier, then if we improve one, if we improve the X2, we go down here, we have to sacrifice X1. So it means that if we can map this one back to a, in this case, a line or a set of optimal controls, then we can have that and we can talk to the stakeholders about, okay, what is the optimum here? So for example, this end point, which corresponds to this point, is probably not a desirable control place, even though it minimizes X2, it's just at the border of the safe operational space when it comes to X1. And given that we have other parameters and uncertainties, we may very well end up outside of the safe space. So we want, may want to back off a bit here, and that could be guided by the uncertainty that we can measure in terms of the other parameters. So somewhere along this line is the sort of the set of controls which we should focus on if you have, say, a decision theater and a discussion with stakeholders about how to optimize this. Okay, so what I've been talking about in general here is uh, domain-specific languages and multi-objective optimization. And I put optimization in quotes because, because actually it will end up being more of an exploration than an optimization. Because opt optimization's output is just a single control vector. But usually it's more complex than that. We, we need to actually explore the space. We need to check, for example, here is two objectives. We may in, in reality have several different objectives and we can only visualize a few of them at a time because of our brain's limited capacity for multidimensional spatial reasoning. But for each choice of two parameters, we can draw this Pareto frontier and we can map it back to the control space and then the stakeholders can discuss and see the trade-offs between how much you can actually gain in one parameter by sacrificing the other and so on. And also, which I haven't shown here, as I mentioned earlier, we also need to be careful with the measure of uncertainty. So the uncertainty is then probably hidden in this P parameter. The other parts. It could be the random seed for an agent-based modeling simulation, or it could be other parameters in your experiment, like the exact uh, ways of setting up the agents and so on. Usually some of those parameters would turn out to be more or less uh, unimportant, and some others would have a significant result change. Um, I argue that domain-specific languages are useful for high-level modeling, and I think that um, Precision is not the key here. So it's not that we want to optimize to the third decimal because there is so much uncertainty involved, but exploration is the key. We want to be able to identify the trade-offs between the different objectives and, and get a feeling for how the system reacts to different controls. 
Okay, questions.